was always that sense in, particularly in the North American city, that whenever we want to do something, we demolish what was there before, that we somehow have to always create a kind of clean slate. For 20 years, nobody could imagine a use for these old buildings, and we came along and thought there was a certain magic in them, and that we needed to just uncover that magic. I think Evergreen challenged us to create the highest ambitions for sustainability and to open up the imagination about what is possible. Evergreen Brickworks is the revitalization of an old brownfield site that for 120 years produced brick that built the city of Toronto and the redevelopment of the site as a, as a centre that focuses on the future of city building and in particular on the community of Toronto and, and, and the citizens of Toronto to explore the future we want to build here, uh, a green city, a sustainable city. So the themes of sustainability and community are, are at the heart of the project. What's interesting is not only thinking about the kind of archaeology and the, um, the history and the layers of this former industrial use on this site as the kind of subject matter for creating a place for community introduction and connection to history and nature and city making, but actually then layering um, into that new buildings which represent the um, epitome of sustainability, in this case a lead platinum objective. A lead platinum building really begins with a, a very straightforward first step, which is reduce your demand. And in the very first step, choose not to tear something down. All the energy that was required to build this in the first place hasn't been lost. And that's an important part of a lead platinum building. Other things we did was use uh, hydronic flooring. So we're standing on a floor which is heated with pipes captured in a layer of concrete over a, a bit of insulation. The next thing that we did was we tried to take advantage of free energy and natural ventilation. We have natural ventilation chimneys, which allows the building to breathe all year long. Don't use more energy than you absolutely have to. And this building did that by, by using a very well insulated walls, windows and roofs. As we began to peel back the layers of this old heritage building, things became obvious that we could and couldn't do. And from a programming perspective, Plans changed. They were constantly in flux. Yeah. We must have been very frustrating as a client. No, not at all. I think it really represents a new model, a way of thinking about city building, um, drawing out the sense of place in a site, drawing out the kind of possibilities. It's a new model of collaboration. Well, and I think it's much more experience, that's for sure. much more realistic to a kind of better way to think about city building um, and community building. The shell of the building needed to be to exemplify best practice, and that's been delivered. I mean, uh, the team at Diamond Schmidt's been phenomenal at, at defining the site as a leadership facility, as an envelope, building envelope. But our responsibility as an organization is also to fill it with incredible programming that also exemplifies that sort of leadership. So everything from the farmers markets to the sort of exhibits to the international forums that we're beginning to host here that bring thought leaders together from around the world, the relationship between the buildings themselves and what's going to be inside them has been a really important um, dialogue, you might call it. What really leads the way is the kind of process, really recognizing that you can't come to a site with preordained solutions, that you really need to kind of work collaboratively, work with experts to really understand a sort of more complex story and more complex set of inputs about what makes a great uh, work of architecture. The workers who worked here uh, shoveling coal and the, the, the folks who made 43 million bricks a year, I think would never have imagined that the site could be transformed into this sort of urban oasis. Uh, some people are referring to it as a bit of a utopia in Toronto.